much for tuning in today and um, I'm super excited. So I wanna start this conversation off with Mark Hutchins, who also is a Business Communication Mastery uh, participant, but also Mark is a great connector and entrepreneur and he is kind of elevating what he's doing as a coach and as an entrepreneur. So Mark, how are you doing today? Good, Dr. D, good. I'm so excited to be here. Thank oh, you. Thank awesome. you for gathering this group. I've needed these like fireside chats and these engagements to like really uplift my spirit. So thank uh, you. All right, you're very welcome. So I'm gonna change our speaker view and I really wanna have a conversation with Mark. So Mark, can you just explain to me how are you doing with COVID and like, how are you as a new business owner? Like, what are some things you're just doing to maintain yourself? Maintain your sanity. My sanity? Oh, uh, <laughs> man, that is tough. That is tough. I look back a lot on what has helped me. And for me, that has been running. So I found what I think of as like one essential ritual, like something that I rely on that just helps me to center myself that I always make time for. And for me, that that, that has been running. So that's probably the first thing. Uh, the second thing is just to be vulnerable and to just let people know that, um, you know, where I'm at and, you know, how I'm doing. I think a lot of times we get a little caught up in just saying, like, how are you? And we kind of qualify it. Like, I'm great. You know, things could be worse. And I think a lot of times we should just really ask, like, how are you? And go a little bit deeper. And I think wow. that is, yeah. I think that's that that's been important yeah for me i think that's great so you're, you're saying like authentic engagement is really something that's kind of holding you together do you guys agree put some of your comments in the chat <laughs> box but yeah um is that what you're saying yes yeah, yeah. that's exactly right um th I mean, that's a big part and the part that has really helped me as well is that i think that uh we go a lot deeper faster into conversations now with people like we just don't have the time so we really can kind of get to these like what is important to you and one thing is a coach I always ask, uh, but I've thought about a lot myself is like, when have I experienced another massive change um, that I succeeded, that I, you know, could look back on. Um, mm. And for me, you know, we had met last fall, Dr. D. Mm -hmm. And when I think about it a lot, you know, in the last five years, I could not really have imagined like where I was at, at that point five years ago. Um, you know, I think I told you already and I'll tell the rest of the group and this is about being vulnerable and sharing is, you know, I was 50 pounds heavier. I was having trouble, um, you know, in relationships. I had high blood pressure and I was isolating myself at that time, even though there was no pandemic going on. Um, mm. And the things that helped me at that time uh, were just by short goal setting and also just realizing that change can happen in a moment. And I think we all know that now. Change has happened in a moment for all of us. We have COVID. Um, and I think that if we rely on our community and our family and those around us, we can really, we can really do great things. And that has helped me. That is what I've been wow. focused on. Wow. That's awesome. Because a lot of times um, it's an interesting time because when people think of home, the word home or, or that feeling of feeling connected, it's, it's not always traditional. <laughs> like mm -hmm. people are usually like, Oh, home. But actually one of the things that's been reported across the board, psychologically speaking, is that, uh, there are a lot of divorces happening. There are a lot of strained relationships. Yeah. And so I feel like people also need other avenues of connection. So I really appreciate you sharing that. Thank and you. even sharing that sometimes we can look back at our at what we have been able to get through and recognize that we're going to be okay, basically. I mean, to look at the, the times when we were at our weakest and say, you know what, if I got through that, then... And you saying I was 50 pounds heavier... Now, I don't know about you guys, but that's encouraging <laughs> to me because every day I'm like, should I run or eat this cookie? And you guys know I love chocolate chip cookies. So, um, so you know, thank you, Mark, for sharing. Thank you. But I also want to ask you, in your opinion, what do you, you know, some people who are really external, this is really a hard time. So what do you suggest some, are some things people can do? to kind of keep their momentum, especially if they're kind of feeling down or they're kind of feeling like, you know, they just don't have it in them to connect because maybe they're, they don't feel like they're well connected. Yeah. I mean, I think there's two things. So I think that one is that is sitting in that place of vulnerability and not trying to move too fast past it. Um, and I think part of that is you, you talked about relationships and being together and what kind of strain. I think part of that is just even a technique, a technique, technique I use is to open up and just say, today is a tough day for me, right? 
and to your partner, your spouse, your family, and just say, I'm at about 20%. Like maybe tomorrow I can be at a, you know, 80%, but today's 20%. So, and then relying on them and letting them kind of help you. And so that I've been is- using this technique more and more the last couple of weeks. Wow. I appreciate that. It's, um, that's really, you know, and I always say in the IWBCC group, if you're not feeling good, just put in a bad emoji. We're all going to be able to know, oh, yeah. you're not having a good day. And I think uh, one of the other things is that a lot of people are saying, we don't even know yet how, how COVID, this whole thing, how it's impacting us, um, not so much health-wise, but how it's impacting our whole society from just not being able to go outside to not being able exactly. to do what we normally would. So to wrap up on your conversation, can you tell us about a time you've been through something and you were able to kind of get yourself out of it? Uh, yeah, I think it speaks well. You know, the first time that I actually ran a marathon, um, that was a, it was that five year period ago. Um, and I had signed up and I was near completing it. I had run about 26 of the miles at that point. If you know a marathon, you know, there's 26.2. I could not have believed that I was going to, um, that I was even running a marathon that day. And as I was approaching the end, um, it was particularly hard. I really thought I was going to give up. I was only a few hundred yards uh, from the end of it. And the thing that helped me is that my sister was there that day and she had kind of come back and she had run with me um, to the end of the race, encouraging me and really, you know, you know, pushing me on just with motivation. And so I think of that in particular is find those people around you, find the coaches around you, find your family around you and rely on them and, and let them help you when you need help. And that's what I've been trying to do as well with the people that I've been coaching and that I work with, um, you know, entrepreneurs in particular is to really help them uh, when they need that help now. Wow. I love it. I mean, I can't eat. First of all, can we all applaud him for running the marathon? Can I even get through three miles right now? Um, So that's really encouraging. And I also can appreciate how you mentioned the importance of having someone else to spur you on. Hmm. So, you know, if you guys, we're all about tribe. If you guys want to learn more about Mark, he's going to put, I'll ask him to click information there in the chat box. You can just reach out. He has some great blogs that he's uh, doing and information. Mark is a great connector, so don't be shy. Um, thank so you. Thank you, Mark, for sharing that. I really appreciate you and thank you so thank you. much. All right. You guys give him a big virtual round of applause. Thank you, Mark. All right. So thank you. And uh, so this is what it's about. You know, doing these fireside chats is about kind of bringing together these powerhouse individuals to say, you know what, let's, let's move up the mountain together. You know, we don't have to be in this journey of, uh, of COVID survival by ourselves, but we can figure out what we can do to move the move ourselves forward and to be more strategic as to how we move forward. So there's so many of you that are tuning in today. I want to thank you so much for being a part. And um, let me know what were some of the things that Mark shared that are still standing out to you. For me, one of the takeaways is you know what, if we're going to climb a mountain, find those people that are going to spur you on. Um, Also be authentic and just say, hey, I'm not doing well. Actually, I need someone to be accountable to. I need someone to help me in this area. So we know that one of the big uh, contributors to persistence is the ability for for efficacy to happen or a sense of belonging, knowing that you can be accountable to someone and they can be accountable to you. So thank you so much. All right, moving forward, I want to ask Naima, soon to be Dr. Naima, to unmute herself. And Naima is also a business communication mastery participant, but a thought leader in her own right in nutrition. And I've asked her to be a spotlight speaker today. So let me switch the reels. Hey, Naima, how are you today? I'm good. How are you, Dr. Alana? I'm so excited to be on your platform again. Thank you. Well, you know what? I had a salad for lunch. And, um, and I have, you know, I, every time I eat something healthy or green, I think of you. So why don't you take a moment and just let people know a little bit about who you are and, and your passion for what you do. Well, I am um, Naima, the nutritionista, and I am passionate about helping professional women lead healthy lives, right? Because a lot of times we think as professional women that it's our job to just do everything for everyone else. And we do that well. But the thing we don't do well is care for self. 
So I think the way that I learned to take care of myself was through nutrition and I'm determined to help other women do the same. Wow. So what, I mean, can you explain what led you to starting your business? I think what led me, you know, I had been married for a few years. I had my children and, you know, me being a nursing professor and I'm always doing and doing and doing. And I was gaining weight. My joints were hurting. And then one day I finally said, I got to do something different. And when I did something different and I realized how I felt and how it didn't just affect my weight, it affected my mood, it affected my pain, it affected so many things, even my relationship with my children and husband. Um, I, I said, other women have to know about this. Mm. Other wow. women have to know about this. And there's so much misinformation out there about nutrition, so much misinformation. And I actually lived it and I actually studied it. So the reality is I want to... To, to help people on along the way in a realistic, factual way. Okay, so could you, what are some things that people can do while they're at home? Because, you know, we're, we are at home, we're not moving as much. Um, what are some things we can just make sure we throw into our diet on a day-to-day -day basis starting tomorrow? A lot of fruit and veggies, right? If you have a sweet tooth, go make yourself a fruit smoothie, right? Right? Go, go do it. Um, if you... If you like salty things, like I do, I go get Triscuits versus potato chips, right? And Triscuits are like wheat crackers that you can get. Mm -hmm. They're much healthier and less processed than a regular cracker would be, right? So I think it's very important for us to learn how to read food labels. And if it has a label on it, more than likely it is processed, right? So we want to make sure we're going to our refrigerator more often than we're going to our pantry. So if you want to keep it simple, go to your fridge more often than your pantry, period. I love it. Moya agrees. She says nutrition is necessary. I'm vegan for 11 years and I am at my healthiest. So I'll yes. tell you a funny story because I know Naima is also, Naima, you're a vegan as well, right? I'm pescatarian. So I only eat, I eat oh, fish, but I don't eat any other fish. So the funny story is that years ago, I said I was going to just go all out and try to be vegetarian. And so um, I was eating primarily vegetarian food. And I told my family, hey, I'm eating vegetarian. You guys can eat meat. Well, a whole four days was perfect. And on day five, I went to go get them a chicken, a rotisserie chicken. But guess what? By the time they came home, that chicken, like most of it was gone. I tore it up. So, I, so I want to share with you guys, but I love, I love how you said that we, you know, just get those fruits and veggies and just do it. And, um, can you talk about, cause I know that you also have a lot of research, scientific research around this. Can you talk about why we should, we should think about this, especially with, um, stress and anxiety and how this might contribute to bad habits eating? Well, I would say this, since I am somebody who actually has have an anxiety disorder, I have generalized anxiety disorder, one part of my treatment plan when my anxiety was really bad in 2013 was eating a whole food diet. Wow. I thought my therapist was crazy when she said, you know, hey, make sure you institute a whole food plant-based diet. I said, what does that got to do with the, the, the fact that I'm anxious? And of course, me being the person I am, I started doing my research. I started realizing, wow, the more processed foods I eat, the more sugary foods I eat, it is going to depress my mood, it's going to make me more anxious, it's going to increase my stress, yep. right? Yep. But if the, the, the more whole foods I eat, such as fruit, veggies, grains, nuts, beans, I have an increased, it increases my mood, it decreases my anxiety, it helps me to manage my stress better. I have been great ever since I started my whole food plant-based diet. Wow. So this is really, and guys, you, and she will share her um, link because she's going to, she's showing us how to make smoothies and what to eat. And um, so definitely show that link there, Naima. And then I just want to ask you, I mean, how is everyone in your community? How are they dealing with COVID and how are you contributing? Um, in my community, I think we're doing, I think we're doing okay. Unfortunately, you know, as many people already know, I'm, I'm a registered nurse, and I just found out yesterday I lost one of my closest friends to COVID-19. She um, was a nurse on the front line in New York City, which is where I'm from. So we're hurting there, um, but I'm, I'm just, I'm thankful that she, she's not in pain. Mm -hmm. So I, I said this last time we met, and I'll say this again. If you can find a way to reach out to a healthcare worker on the front line, please do. Um, what I'm doing now and what I've been doing since the beginning of April 
is um, paying for lunch once a week for a nurse randomly who was a part of my community. Um, and it's been amazing. I've gotten great feedback from it. I know it's small, but guess what? Small, small things lead to big change, right? Wow. So, so I, I really appreciate you because you're also teaching uh, upcoming nurses, right? Yes. Yes. So, I mean, you guys give her and everything Naeem is, Naeem is doing to just make these soon-to-be uh, RNs. Um, give her a round of a, a virtual round of applause. Give her your kudos. Um, we you. really appreciate what you're doing. And I have to say that we, I, you know, the more we can learn what we can do to calm our anxieties and to keep our immune systems strong is going to be great so everybody when she puts this link down make sure you check her out don't be shy if you're trying to take an alternative to the chocolate chip cookie just, <laughs> <laughs> just and i just share this one thing um yeah. in my group i i did a video making homemade elderberry syrup which is helps to boost your immune system and if you go online and look at how much homemade elderberry syrup costs it's about 20 dollars for like four to eight ounces i teach you to make it yourself for less than wow less than five dollars wow and i'm a pancake person so i can't wait to learn about that syrup yes yeah, yeah. oh so any last thoughts naima that you want to say or share with everyone i would just say be encouraged remember go to your fridge more than you go to your pantry you got this wow. somebody write that go to your fridge more than you go to your pantry quote unquote naima thank you so much for your Absolutely. time today all right so now we are going to switch gears and I'm sorry, you guys. I'm trying to let somebody in our group. So give me one second. But while I'm doing that, can you guys just put down in the comment, what are you, what are you guys taking away from Naima's comments? What are some of the thoughts that you are kind of, that are resonating with you? Definitely for me, some of the things that she shared. Um, yes, definitely for me, some of the things that she shared with regards to just taking ownership of how what we're putting in our mouth, thinking about being more um, aware of what we're eating and our stress feelings and all of that. So thank you so much. And, and feel free, Naima, to share again your link so people can find you and follow you. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. So now I want to bring the discussion to Ms. Janelle Hablondell. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, I can. Okay, for some, oh, there you are. All right. So let me change gears here. So first of all, welcome, Janelle. Why don't you tell everybody where you're from and what the name of your business is? Okay, well, I'm all the way from Trinidad. So welcome, 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 everybody. Um, I'm home, meaning my WBC, that, 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 you're my peeps. So I'm home. <laughs> so thank you very much for asking me back on the platform. Um, I am the queen of teens. I am the founder of Inspire Teens, where I help and empower teens uh, basically to unlock their confidence and in turn help parents to nurture and to guide to increase their own confidence and to help grow happy and responsible teens. Wow. Well, we are just so happy to see you again. And guys, if you don't know this powerhouse woman, she not only is the teen confidence uh, queen of teens, she has her own story that just listening to her is very inspiring. So how is everybody doing in Trinidad with COVID? How, how is everybody, what's the climate like? Well, we are struggling uh, because we are a very um, get going friendly, can't wait for Friday, uh, going into Monday weekend type of community. So knowing that we've been locked down now for pretty much eight weeks, it seems like eight years for most of us. <laughs> yes. And the, the biggest blow that we would have probably had from Trinidad is when they took away KFC. <laughs> so, oh! <laughs> so, so they, they closed KFC altogether? Yes, yes. We have no food places open. They can't even do delivery. Wow. Okay. So that, that, that was like, oh my God, how would we survive? Do we know how to cook? <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So tell us, I mean, so you're, you're a mom and tell us what are some of the things that you're doing with your children to kind of keep them together and keep them on a schedule? Like what are some of the things you're doing? Okay. Well, we're doing all the things that we said that we wanted to do and we didn't have the time to do it. So we sat down and we worked out between all of us what it is we really want to get done, right? Because most times when I'm coaching parents and I'm coaching teens, one of the biggest uh, hurdles we have is that we don't have time. 
So now that we have the time, we've decided, okay, let's all get together and work out what it is that we want to do. So uh, we've been cooking, we've been gardening, we've been clearing out. Oh my gosh, this is the time right, to clear all the trash, all the clutter, things that you've been holding on to. And now that we don't really have anywhere to go, <laughs> some of the clothes, you're like, oh, okay, we'll just put that away. So we've been doing that uh, most of the times. Wow. So, and I think that that's useful for anyone. I mean, now all the things we said we didn't have time to do, now we can use that time to actually be a little more productive. So can you tell us what your, do you try to keep them on a school schedule? Do you, do you kind of give um, tasks to each child? Like, how do you do this? Okay. Well, I did try the homeschooling thing and I, I must give moms uh, like a hundred points to do that. But I, I wasn't very good <laughs> so because of the things that they were doing, I had no idea. So I had to raise my hand and I had to get some online tutoring for them because uh, it's only recent that we heard now that schools would not reopen here till September. And that would have made um, the children not be in school like for over eight months. So I've, I had to raise my hand and said, you know what, I need an expert in this field. They do that stuff. And while they're doing the academics, when that is all done, we basically get together and, and do what we, we want to just air off. Because right now, our teens, uh, two things are happening right now in the houses of teens. Uh, your fridge door is opening every 20 seconds. And <laughs> Naeem is nodding her head. <laughs> yeah, and they're saying I'm bored every 10 seconds. Mm. So we have to ensure that we keep them occupied because they, this new temporary normal is not what they're accustomed to. They're accustomed to getting up going to school, meeting their friends, uh, you know, hanging out with, 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 with whoever, just doing things. And because that now has been taken away from them, it's like, okay, where are we? Who are we? So, so they're like the squirrel, you know, from Ice Age, just looking for that acorn. Where is it? So the parents now have to be very, very um, interesting and try to work out what can I do. So um, Inspire Teams, of course, has stepped in and we've now launched our um, YouTube channel where every Tuesday that we would, yes, yes, I'm so proud, right? Uh, that where we give um, teen tips, basically two, three minutes of teen tips of what can we do with our teens, not just in this time, but in, in, in any time. And um, I was very lucky and privileged that one of our local libraries um, loved the series that they are now, they now have teen tips as part of their schedule in their library. Yay! So we have been seen to more teens and we were um, featured in a, 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 a local infotainment um, TV channel a couple of days ago where they were really loving the teen tips. Uh, you I am so proud of you guys. Give her a big virtual applause. I mean, Janelle is there in Trinidad just doing big things. And really what I love is just your heart for teens and just to build confidence. And, um, you know, if you're a parent, one thing I love that she said is raise your hand. You know, she has some awesome solutions, some awesome ideas. And also, guys, if you need curriculums, I have a ton of them, a ton of virtual resources also. So just also just put a comment down. I'll make sure to try to send that to you. But make sure when she throws down her link and everything else that you go ahead and follow Miss Janelle Hoblondell. Thank you so much for your feedback, Janelle. We love it. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. All right. And Maggie, Maggie, can you hear us? Yes, ma'am. All right. I can't see you. So once you turn your video on, um, then I'll be able to switch views. I'm here. So you're here. Give me one second. Let's see where you're at. I'll just keep it this way. So, hey, Maggie. Hey, um, Dr. D. <laughs> good to see you. Thank you. Can you share with everybody um, kind of how you're doing? Well, Maggie's also a registered nurse, right, Maggie? So how yes, are you doing? Give her a, a just because she is out there an essential worker. We appreciate every single day you get up to serve a family member. Um, you know, I don't, you know, anyway, I could say a lot, but I'll just say <laughs> I truly appreciate what you're doing. But also Maggie has an awesome uh, business. Maggie, why don't you share everyone what your business is and why you're so passionate about it? <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Dr. 
to do. It's such a great privilege to be here on your platform. So as you said, I'm a registered nurse. We are out there serving people. And also I have a passion to get people out of debt and um, just love to just see people walk in financial freedom. So that is my passion, just because even now it's even more. We, um, you remember, Dr. D, we were talking even from last year when we were talking to people about debt and just telling them to just get out of debt, create emergency funds. And here we are, people are scrambling, you know, because they did not prepare. So I do have a passion to just see people walk in financial freedom. I love it. Thank you. So what are some, I mean, how many of you feel like you want to have some financial freedom? Anybody? Raise your hand if I can see you. Everybody's just like, yes, I, you know, anytime. Um, so what, are, what do you think some people can do um, just immediately kind of like looking at their finances? What are some of the top two things that you should think they should do right now? Right now, I think like people just need to, like if you're still working and let's say you're working from home there's so many things you know let's say you used to go to work and you used to buy lunch every day now you're not buying lunch every day so that's maybe fifty dollars a week that you could put um, into your savings if you were traveling you were using gas gas prices are low and you're not going to work that's another like fifty sixty dollars a week that you save that's almost like a hundred dollars in just that one week mm -hmm. you know yeah so yeah. So I think the other, it's funny, but this really did happen. I was looking at Instagram and there was a, a woman who I guess she had gotten, she had gotten her stimulus. And so she was like, I'm out with my stimulus check and she was shopping. And I, and I was just like, I wanted to, I was like, you, you know, are you really on Instagram? I'm not that, you know, are you really sharing? And who knows, maybe she was, it didn't look like she was paying bills, right? It, she, she looked like she was out and about. That's what I'm trying to say. And she was just happy that she said, I went to the bank and my money was there and you could just sense that she was going to go out. And I say that because, you know, just because we're staying on in the inside doesn't mean people aren't making purchases online. And some of yes. them, maybe they're not, maybe they're not purchases that are necessary. Right. So my next question to you is, um, yeah, what would you tell that person that just kind of is just kind of spending frivolously, you know, they get in curbside all the time. They're, they're just not thinking about it's, the long term. I would say it's foolish because, you know, we are in this cycle and it's amazing that people don't realize the cycles we are in. There's seasons of plenty and there's seasons of lack. We are in that season right now. You know, maybe you will feel like you don't, like you have all this money. Uh, that stimulus check is nothing. It's really, it's not a lot. I would definitely save and make um voice choices buy things that are gonna make you money find ways to have a little a business on the side buy real estate do things that are gonna make you money while you're still sleeping wow well goodness there's so much there that would take a whole hour maggie so um so you guys maggie has an awesome uh program and she will share her link below let us know what are your thoughts as she's sharing what are some takeaways thank you so much maggie for sharing um how can people learn more about what it is that you have to offer i can definitely put uh, my facebook uh, my website is coming uh is coming out the end of this week, but definitely reach out to me. I'm on Facebook. I'm on BSM. Oh, I'm not on BCC anymore. You know, I'm here. So yeah. And I will say we have decided. So if you were in BCM, we opened up the BCM group so that you guys can come and join it. BCM stands for Business Communication Mastery. We have an open group now. So if you want to learn more about that, just um, make sure you email me. But thank you so much, Maggie. Uh, Naima says the takeaway is do things that will make you money while sleeping. All right, well, I wanna thank everybody for their feedback. And I would want to just, did I miss anyone? Did everyone speak that was supposed to speak? I wanna make sure I didn't miss anyone. All right, so we're gonna continue this discussion and I wanna just kind of wrap up our dialogue today. It's, I feel like time has just gone so fast, but I wanna wrap up our dialogue with giving you some um, other ideas to think about and then open the floor for discussion and engagement and sharing. I really appreciate all of you taking your time today. So um, here, oh, oh, one second, y'all. I've made my screen completely bigger than I wanted to. So just give me one second. Um, there we go. So one of the, so a couple of things. So you know, in Tolji has been taking time 
to goodness help calm the storms of a lot of small business owners and people starting new businesses. So I want to kind of give you some tips and things to think about to expand your business, to grow it like crazy, and to tell you if if there was ever a time where you needed to be on fire for the things you say you want to do, now is the time. Like this is, you know, I was talking to someone the other day and, you know, we were building his business and he just put his head down and, you know, he made so much progress and he put his head down in his hands and he was like, man, now I can't do what I was supposed to do. Cause a lot of what he was doing was showing up at these events to, to announce things, to speak at things. And so he just felt like, you know, all was lost. And what I kept trying to tell him is it's not lost. You just have to pivot because things are going to shift. Things will come back, but it's probably not going to be how we've done before. So as I'm sharing, I really want you to get into this discussion, throw your thoughts in the chat box because these next 10 minutes are really just for you. So the first thing I've noticed across the board when I'm speaking to the small business association and to other individuals that have businesses that they They've had for years or people who are starting new businesses, the first thing I want to say, you're going to have to shift your perspective about everything. Shift it doesn't mean stop, doesn't mean it won't work. It just means shift. And what I mean by that is, even if you felt like you did enough, you've been engaging enough, it's probably not enough. You need to engage two times as much. Why? Because there are millions of people that are literally at home right now. <laughs> this is, and I can't reinstate this. There are literally millions of people on Instagram, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on all these platforms, on WhatsApp, everywhere that are literally looking for solutions. They're trying to understand, well, how do I move forward from where I was three months ago? How do I save more money? And if I was going to invest, where do I do it? And if I were gonna start a program, how do I do it and where are the people? And I wanna tell you across the board, the engagement rate across all social mediums has completely doubled because more people have time to be on these platforms. And now they're on the platforms with their children, they're on the platforms with you know, their, uh, their business partners, whereas before you wouldn't have so many people having Zoom meetings and things like that. So some of the initial things you can do to just already grow what you're doing two times as much, start having, you know, sometimes email is great, but sometimes you can just literally pick up the phone and start actually calling every single person in your database people you've known for years, people you haven't had talk, a chance to talk to for moments. And as I'm sharing, if things are standing out to you, feel free to put things in the chat box. But one of the things is just connect, 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 because you would be amazed at how many people are just looking to have a regular conversation. They just want to have a conversation about what's going on. So I would say also, please lift the imposter syndrome. You know how many people I know that are experts and specialists and spent years doing something, but for whatever reason, they're not working on a new book, they're not creating an ebook, they're not doing videos, they're not um, letting people know how excited they are, because I'm gonna be so real right now. Uh, you know, you can hire as many people as you want, marketers, you can hire freelancers, but until you feel as fired up about what you're doing, uh, more so than anybody else, you are not going to see the kind of level of success that I believe you're capable of. So, you know, one of the things you can think about is how during the Black pandemic, um, during the Black plague, you know, uh, Shakespeare still wrote Macbeth. The Black, the, the, um, the pressing machine, right, was invented around that time. So there were things that were still happening even when there were prior pandemics. And I want to just remind you that you really have to be intentional. You, you know, as, even if you have children or even if you're working another job, you really want to be intentional because I do think we will come out of this on the other side. So the first thing is definitely take time to connect as much as possible. Connect with thought leaders, connect across streams, connect with people that have strengths in areas where you might have a weakness. And then I have to say this because more and more people are not thinking about this, Will you please take out your phone and record yourself? The best thing you can do is actually listen to how you sound when you're talking about the things you say you are passionate about. It's amazing how, we, how we're not really sure about how we sound when we're actually sharing our service 
or a product. And it just takes time. Just practice, pick up your phone and, you know, rehearse it, rehearse it, go over it, look at yourself, look at if you would buy from you. <laughs> right. So these are some things I would just encourage you to do. And then um, some things to think about. So on Wednesday, I will be talking to people about how to create a digital course and that is a, uh, a free webinar Wednesday at noon. It's going to be our, the fourth part of that. And tomorrow, another virtual mixer. So tomorrow, uh, we will have a show and tell. So it's, these are individuals in our new Toji uh, Digipreneur Meetup group. So we're going to have show and tell times. The biggest thing is this. Everything and all the energy you would have taken if you were going to regular networking events is the same energy you would have to take to go to things online. But don't just go to anything online. You really gotta do your research and make sure that you're not just showing up at random events, but find the events where your target is going to be. And so, you know, SCORE, the Small Business Association, they have a number of webinars that you can attend. You know, there are a number of resources too on the SBA site that you can figure out, okay, well, if you need to get a loan or anything like that, you can go on the SBA site to learn more about that. And then there are just a host of things that you can do to stay building yourself up. So on the business side, the biggest note is connect, 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 go to webinars and seminars that make sense for you and your brand and your business. And uh, again, if you haven't ever come to one of our Kickstart My Biz meetings, we will have one at the end of April. So just make sure you connect that way. And on your personal development side, you know, I always say you can't, if you don't feel five star, you can't charge five star. So you've got to work on the weaker areas and do a SWAT of self, like take a moment and look at where you're strong at, look at where you're weaker at, and really be intentional about how you can start to focus on those weaker areas. Because you can't just work on the great and then not think about those areas that are still holding you back. And so I want to just encourage you to keep showing up to those things, those places, those spaces that really are going to allow you to expand and to grow, you know, and connect with people. So that's another way. Connect with individuals. You may, you may not know them, right? Take your time to get them to know them in the IWBCC group or get a moment, take a moment and email me. If you've never had a, a, um, a complimentary chat with me, make sure you go to my website and schedule some time. But one of the things I really want to see is more authentic discussions, more dialogues. I think entrepreneurs spend a lot of time by themselves. And the best thing you can do is you don't want to be in eight tribes, right? You got to find your place and then find a couple of people that you really, you know, you feel like you're connected with. And that's how you're going to go and grow. You know, listen to what Mark has to say. Go check him out. Go tap into his blog. If you're a parent, go check out Janelle Hall Blondell. Go and see, oh my goodness, how is she doing it, right? And, um, you know, go and see how, how to crush your debt. How, what are some ways that you can save money? Go and see, Maggie. So it's about connecting. Because when we do come out of this on the other side, you, want, you don't want to come in the pit. You want to come and say, wow, look at all the new friends I made when, you know, when we went through that time. And you know what I'll say is we tend to remember those that really, re that really were with us when we were in those different you know, pitfall areas. So I just want to thank everybody for taking time to tune in today and being a part of this discussion. And I would love to just hear from you, whether you're new or whether you've been here for a while, what are some things you're taking away? And if you, just, if you don't have anything to say, you can just put your thoughts in the chat box. But what are some things you're taking away from today? Again, if you liked this, then next week, Next Sunday, we will have Susie Carter, we will have Sarah Scala, we will have some Bev Atfield and some others joining in on the discussion about keeping the momentum as new entrepreneurs and as individuals. So same time, same place, same password, you're in. So I'm super happy to have you guys here. So any thoughts as we wrap up? Moya, so good to see you. Thank you for your first time. Hey, giving you a big wave over there. Liam, thank you so much. Lisa, thank you so much. Your very first time. So any of the new people, y'all want to say anything? Oh, hey, Marie, I didn't even see you there. Good to see you to do too as well. And 646, I don't know who that is, but welcome to the conversation. So first, because you guys are visitors, I'm going to open the floor to you guys. If you want to say something, if you want to just say you had a good time or whatever your thoughts are, feel free to share. 
Well, hi, this is Moya. For me, um, interesting. Um, I've just joined the group itself. Um, there a lot of information, a lot of inspiration. I am typically a very reserved person. I don't talk a lot. I don't interact much. I like to watch. I read a lot. Um, but this is very inspiring. I'm um, hearing everybody talk. Um, listening to you, Dr. D, was amazing because I've, I've listened to like some of the stuff that you have, um, topics that you've spoken on. Um, so this has given me a little bit more momentum because honestly, um, I was just laid off from my job. Um, and you know, for the first time in my life, I'm not even Can worried. we all say, can we all encourage her while she shares that? First of all, she just said she never talks and she's an observer. So for her to be speaking right now is major. Moya, I appreciate you. I appreciate you sharing that. So, yeah. Yes. So, but thank you so much for the invite. And I'm looking to grow as grow and learn as, um, as we continue. Awesome. Thank you, Moya. And I would love to give you that free virtual, um, uh, I already, I sent an, I made an appointment. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> there you have it. All right. Anybody else? Um, anyone else want to say any new individuals? Hi. Hi, Lisa. Regina. Oh, hi, Regina. Oh, now I can see you. Yes. <laughs> hi, ladies. It's so great to be here. I absolutely had a blast. I mean, even though I was driving, it was really good to hear all the speakers and see some of my beautiful friends, ladies, Maggie, Janelle. Um, some of the things that stuck out, um, I love the reminder, um, or I love the gesture that Naima did um, in terms of gifting um, lunch for the frontline workers, I was like, oh yes, that was a great idea. So I think I'm going to um, join you in that and, and just supporting some of our frontline workers. Um, I never thought about that in terms of being a support for them. And then um, um, Alana, when you were, or Dr. D, when you were talking about um, in this time where social media is really, really crowded, that we need to be sure to show up because no one, no matter who you hire, if you're not willing to show up with that energy, then it's, you're not going to get that benefit. And it just reminded me of a saying that a mentor would frequently tell me, no one is going to do for you what you're not willing to do for yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, you've got to show up. You've got to show up with a passion. You've got to show up with the boldness because that is what people connect to. So thank you for that amazing reminder. And thank you for the invitation to be here tonight. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you. Yes. Um, I have to say, Regina, thank you. Um, that that was what really made my business from being a hobby to what it is today. I had, I was showing up like I had a part-time job. And then one day I was like, wait a minute, if this is going to be real, I, why am I, you know, cause when we, what do we do when we go and when we're starting on our first day at a new job and, and let's say it's a position, we, we show up like nobody's business. Don't we? The first week we got those outfits are banging. You know, we are together. We're there 10 minutes before we're supposed to start. So we have to show up that way for ourselves and our own businesses. And I will also say it, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to show up. So a lot of times we just, we have everything. We have the content. We have, you know, whatever it is that we're doing, we just need to now deliver a little more. So thank you. Anybody else want to share? Lisa, I thought I saw you unmuted. Yes, I was. Thank you, uh, Dr. D, for the invite. Um, I enjoy all the speakers. They gave me some enlightening on a couple of business that I have been uh, starting on and actually just starting on one of them and um, had a little fear, but listening to all of uh, the speakers kind of gave me more momentum. Wow, thank you to the speakers. And to actually move forward in what I need to do. I love it. And Lisa, I hope you schedule a time with me. We'll connect after, but I'm super happy you're in the tribe. So thank you so much. Anybody else that's new that <laughs> hasn't spoken yet? Well, I'll, I'll say something. <laughs> Hi, Indiana. Yes. So, uh, this is very inspirational uh, in listening to all of you speak because one of the, the things that I have uh, noticed and been listening to people say, you know, is, oh, I want to go back to the norm. I, wa I just want everything to go back to normal. And I'm saying to myself, I don't want it to go back to normal. I don't, my normal was boring. And I had this whole list of 
to you know for um new year's resolution or the things that i want to do and i'm like no i'm moving forward that's what i want to do so listening to all of you speaking and and seeing how you're just moving forward is an inspiration so thank you mm, awesome thank you indiana i appreciate you any other individuals want to share something yes. jennifer i know this is your second time oh liam go ahead and then i'll, I'll call on jennifer oh sorry uh, just saying this was really great. I love the sense of community here. Thanks for organizing this. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, Jennifer, you want to say anything? Okay, we'll come back to you if you if you can hear us. Uh, Marie, do you want to say anything? Sure. Well, I just want to say thank you. First time here. Um, you know, I think what, what attracted me to coming in is just the idea of having a, a building a tribe, even in this distancing situation that we in, it sort of made me think about how intentional that I have to be in terms of really attracting the people that I want to be in my circle versus waiting for them to just drop in. And so, you know, we still have an opportunity to network and I do appreciate you saying sort of tapping into those resources and, focusing on personal development and all the different aspects and for me during this time I've been thinking about sort of mining my mind versus like oh I see a lot of fitness going on but I feel that I want to focus on the mental building of my um, of that muscle mm -hmm. versus the physical is important but I feel like that's the thing that's going to really keep me forward like the positive thinking the being kind to myself and other to provide that for my clients. Um, so it's important to sort of surround myself with this type of tribe where I feel like that energy is very contagious and I can continue doing what I'm doing. Well, I appreciate you. Yes. And we all agree. Um, I will say if you're not in IWBCC, feel free to join or send me an email. I would love to have you uh, in the tribe because one of the things, uh, first of all, for example, in June, I want to do a night of hope. And literally I'm looking for speakers, artists, you name it. We're going to just jam down on social media <laughs> and allow people to come together and feel inspired in different, in different ways. So, you know, this is a great opportunity for you to level up as a leader, as a speaker, and as an author or whatever else anyone else in this tribe is doing. All right. Um, anyone else I didn't hear from? So any last thoughts from people just in general? What are you pulling away from today? I just want to say, um, hey, Dr. Alana. Hey. I just want to say, I, I just feel blessed to be in this tribe. It's just full of positivity and innovation, all wrapped in one. So it really, truly is a blessing. Thank you Thank so you. much. So much. Thank you. Um, the feedback that... Um, that Mac, the, the Maggie, when Maggie spoke about, um, the, I saw somebody wrote debt crusher. Um, and it's very, it's very important because um, a lot of us are gonna come out of this um, in, the, in the red, not in the black. And I think she gave some really great pointers. Um, the money we used to spend that we don't need to spend to save it. Um, that, that's a habit that I cultivated my girls to, mm -hmm. just because you have it don't mean you have to spend it. And if you have to buy something, what's the value of what you're buying? Can you resell it and get half of what you just spent type of mentality? So what she, the, um, what she gave was amazing. Mm. Um, yeah. So I, I think that there are so many individuals here that we can all learn from. And I appreciate you all. Again, Toji has so many programs. We also do have coaching programs that if you felt like you wanted to learn more about it, don't be shy. Make sure to reach out to me. This has been recorded and this will be placed in the IWBCC group and also on the Dr. Alana page. I want to say thank you. Also letting you know that Monday, Tuesdays, and Fridays at 7 a.m., I'll start going live on Instagram, on Dr. D Inspire with a Y, and also on Facebook. So you guys just tune in whenever you can on those particular days, and I'll be going live. And I just want you to know, you know what? You're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. <laughs> and let's get through this together. And lastly, if you haven't gotten your International Women Build Confidence Conference virtual tickets, you want to make sure to grab that complimentary ticket. There's no cost for our May event. And so that is available on my website. And again, we will have all the information there in the IWBCC group. 
Any last comments or questions? I wanna say thank you to everybody for tuning in. And I really appreciate you all. Also, don't forget next Sunday, same time, Susie Carter, Sarah Scala, Bev Atfield, yours truly, we're gonna be talking about how you can go and grow again financially and also as an entrepreneur. So I appreciate you all. You guys have a fabulous night. Take care, big kisses, bye-bye.